Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, yesterday in New South Wales, 132,000 people came forward to get vaccinated. Outstanding result. Thank you so much. If we keep this rate going, we will hit all our targets in relation to vaccination. We're now at 5.6 million jabs in New South Wales, and 54% of us have had at least one dose, and 29% uh, of our population is now fully vaccinated. These are great milestones that we're hitting, and we can't say enough how important it is for people to come forward and get vaccinated. Yesterday in New South Wales, we had 642 cases of community transmission, at least 41 of those, and this number will go up as we um, further finalise the cases. At least 41 were infectious in the community during this time. Sadly, four people lost their lives and we extend our deepest condolences uh, to their loved ones. A female in her 80s at Royal North Shore Hospital who was unvaccinated, a female in her 80s at Campbelltown Hospital who'd had one dose of vaccine, a man in his 80s in Nepean Hospital who'd had one dose of vaccine, a man in his 70s at St George Hospital who'd also had one dose of vaccine, and Dr Chant will provide further details. Uh, again, our deepest condolences and sympathies to the loved ones uh, of those four, four people. Uh, the areas of concern uh, remain the same. The vast majority of our cases, an overwhelming number of them in New South Wales, are in southwest and western Sydney, and in particular, we call out again Marylands, Greenacre, Guildford, Granville, Yuguna, and Auburn. Please know in these communities the viral load is extremely high, and chances are you have the virus or someone you're coming into contact with has the virus. Please remember that. Uh, also in western New South Wales, Dubbo uh, remains a concern and surrounds, and the Deputy Premier will give an update on uh, regional New South Wales as well. Uh, it's so important to note that uh, New South Wales has said all along, uh, Delta is something we haven't seen before in our country, and we need to make sure we do everything we can to reduce case numbers, but also, of course, that we increase our vaccination rates. And it is through higher vaccination rates that we can look forward to living life more freely. And having said that, I also want to thank in particular the vast majority of people across the state, especially in those 12 local government areas of concern, that are doing their best. We know how stressful and difficult this is, and so many people are doing their best, but unfortunately the case numbers continue to grow in those same communities. Uh, in the last uh, 48 hours, um, Health, Police and a New South Wales working group, uh, given uh, the, the compliance challenges that police have updated us on in the last few days, and given uh, the surge in case numbers in the last few days. Um, the government is now about to announce final measures to make sure we do everything we can. We throw everything at getting the case numbers down, but also while we do that, we put all our energies in getting the vaccination rates up. And I can't thank our citizens enough because our, our aim is always keeping people out of hospital, keeping people alive and well, and that is the measure of success. Uh, so from Monday at midnight, uh, the Greater Sydney lockdown will extend until the end of September. So the Greater Sydney lockdown will be extended until the end of September, but I also want to state that the Central Coast and Shell Harbour will be defined as regional. So Greater Sydney includes all those areas that are currently in lockdown in Greater Sydney, but for the Central Coast and Shell Harbour, which will be defined as rural and regional. And as we announced yesterday, for rural and regional communities, the lockdown is going until at least uh, August 28, and uh, we'll wait for health advice before we say anything more about that at this stage. Uh, I also want to stress that uh, from Monday midnight, unless you're exercising, masks should be worn outdoors everywhere across New South Wales. Uh, our concern is that when people are walking past a group of people or accidentally bumping into people, that, uh, that can cause, that fleeting contact can cause transmission. And even when you're exercising, you need to have the mask with you. In case uh, you're doing some strenuous exercise and you happen to come into contact with anybody else, the mask needs to be put on your face. And this also from police makes it easier for them to make sure that everybody is sticking to the rules. So this mask wearing outdoors, unless you're exercising, applies to every single citizen across New South Wales. Whether you live in Sydney, whether you live in the bush, everybody has to respect that rule. We're also encouraging, as we do for schools, unless you absolutely have to, please do not send your children to childcare or to early childhood. We know this is a big imposition for many families. 
But uh, as Dr Chant uh, has been highlighting, we're seeing too much transmission from workers uh, to families and we need that to stop. So we understand that some families don't have a choice uh, uh, and we get that. But we're just appealing to everybody. For schools, for example, it's only around 1% to 3% of students on a good day who are actually at school. And we want to see those percentages in childcare and early childhood as well. And that's for everybody across the state. We appreciate there are circumstances when that's not a, that possible. But we just ask everybody to do that as much as possible. Now, in terms of the local government areas of concern, I can't stress enough uh, that we fear for you. We've imposed a lot of restrictions on you already. Uh, but we don't want to see more of you end up in hospital. We don't want to see more of you lose loved ones. And it, it's heartbreaking when you see disease rip through families. Families who are unvaccinated are suffering the most. Uh, and for this reason, uh, we've taken, the government has taken the advice of our health and police who've worked together on presenting these to us yesterday, uh, that we will be implementing curfews in those local government areas of concern from Monday. From 9pm to 5am, you cannot leave your home, uh, unless, of course, it's for authorised work or for emergencies. So police will be stopping everybody who's leaving their home from 9pm to 5am. And again, this is based on police feedback we received in the last few days about the type of activity that's unfortunately being carried out by a small number of people. But as we said, Delta doesn't leave any room for error. And I apologise deeply to the vast majority of people in those communities who are so doing the right thing. But for our own health and safety moving forward, we need to make these difficult decisions. Uh, if you are in a local government area of concern, we ask that you limit your exercise to an hour a day. Unfortunately, too many people are using that for the wrong reasons. Again, we want everybody to be healthy and we want everybody to utilise that exercise allowance in those areas of concern, but we ask you to limit it to an hour a day. Again, police have given us feedback that a handful of people are unfortunately doing the wrong thing where that's concerned. Uh, also in those areas of concern, outside of school, if there's any professional development or educational learning, all of that has to be done online. We don't want people turning up uh, for professional development or learning or anything outside of school, so make sure that any activity, any learning activity outside of school is conducted online. Uh, we're expanding click and, uh, click and collect uh, in relation to um, places like garden centres, plant nurseries, office, office supplies, so anything that isn't essential, uh, we're asking everybody in those areas of concern to use click and collect services. And also, we're asking for vaccines to be mandated for childcare workers and disability support workers. It's really important to make sure that in relation to those workers, that they're vaccinated and they have until uh, August the 30th to get their first dose to go back to work. I also uh, want to mention that Commissioner Fuller has been given additional powers, which he, he will talk about in relation to uh, police powers in maintaining compliance. And he'll also discuss the permit system. And Dr Chant will provide an update on surveillance testing in those communities, as well as rapid antigen testing. Uh, I also want to stress finally that in New South Wales, there's half a million supply of Pfizer available to everybody 16 to 39 in those 12 local government areas of concern. You are being given priority. Please take up this opportunity because the more we vaccinate, the quicker we vaccinate, the sooner we get out of this. And to all those 16 to 39 year olds, uh, the reason why we're extending the lockdown for another month um, and the reason why we're imposing these additional measures uh, in those local government areas of concern is because the vaccine takes at least two to three weeks, the first dose to have effect. So we're doing everything we can. We've thrown everything at this. And now it's time to bunker down. And I can't stress that enough. It is time for all of us to bunker down, uh, take this as seriously as we can, although so many of us have, the vast majority have. Uh, this is it. We do everything we can to reduce case numbers and we do everything we can to get those vaccination rates up. And yes, we will have two things to announce next week. Our plan for what schools looks like in term three and four and also what life looks like for some at uh, six million jabs. And that they're things we'll discuss next week. But in the interim, this is what life will look like uh, for, for most of us uh, for, until the end of September. But next week, can I stress, in relation to schools and in relation to what happens for fully vaccinated people at six million jabs, we will discuss next week and their announcements will make next week. I'll now ask Commissioner Fuller to make his comments, then Dr Chant, then the Deputy
answer all your questions. So if everyone could just ask their questions one at a time so we can get to everybody. Thank you. Morning, Premier, Deputy Premier, ladies and gents. 800 tickets overnight, 50 charges for breaching the health orders. That brings this week's total to nearly 3,500 since Operation Stay at Home uh, commenced. I'm going to give an example of that. Four men this morning at Dremoyne were stopped at 2 a.m. and gave the excuse of exercising. They were from the LGAs of concern. They were given $17,000 worth of tickets and sent packing home. Of the 800 tickets written, nearly 500 of those were for people leaving the house without a reasonable excuse. And this is why, well, it's certainly one of the reasons the police minister and I have asked for these additional powers, including the curfew. Um, can I say, firstly, police now have the power, if they find someone outside of an LGA of concern without a reasonable excuse, to issue them not just an infringement, but an order to return home, which is extremely important. Equally, if someone enters an LGA of concern without excuse, not only will they be fined, they will be sent home and they will be have to self-isolate for 14 days. Now, this is all about stopping the transmission of the virus from the areas of concern, those 12 LGAs, into the rest of Greater Sydney and certainly uh, regional New South Wales. The Police Commission now also has powers to deem a residential premises as a COVID risk. Now, these are the premises where we know receive information from health. There's a COVID positive case in the residence. There are close contacts. We now have greater powers to control. Now, these welfare visits are not just about making sure people comply with the health orders. Police and defence have come across people who are gravely ill and possibly would have died. Police Commissioner now also has power to declare a residential apartment a risk and we can lock that apartment down until New South Wales Health has conducted the appropriate tests. Can I say two other permit systems will come in later next week, and that is for any authorised worker leaving the LGAs of the concern, you must have a permit. And additionally, anyone entering the LGAs of concern for the reason of work must carry a permit. Now, we know tomorrow there's a new permit system to protect regional New South Wales. With any of these permit systems, if the system is down, if there's any sense of failure, police won't take action for you not having a permit. However, can I say and be clear, it's an offence now to leave Greater Sydney to go to regional New South Wales without a reasonable excuse. So please don't think that if there's a failure of the permit system, if there's a delay to the permit system, that it is OK for you to leave those LGAs of concern or, in fact, enter it. There are current health offences for that. The permit system is to help police with enforcement. The permit system is to help individuals to better understand their rights and what they can do lawfully. These additional powers including the curfews were from a police perspective about stopping the spread of the virus. The police minister and I have been extremely supportive of these powers and we certainly welcome them. We will continue to drive operations stay at home. We have nearly a thousand Australian Defence Force workers on the ground in New South Wales assisting not just through hotel quarantine welfare visits. They're in regional New South Wales working with police and working with New South Wales Health. Thank you. So we had 644 locally acquired COVID cases reported in the 24 hours to 8 p.m. last night, and there were two overseas acquired cases. Testing numbers were high at 127,590. Tragically, there were a number of deaths a woman in her 80s from Sydney's Inner West died at Royal North Shore Hospital and she was a resident of the Wyoming Aged Care Facility and is the fourth death linked to this cluster. There was a woman in her 80s from southwestern Sydney and she died in Campbelltown Hospital. A man in his 80s from western Sydney died at Nepean Hospital where he acquired his infection and he had received one dose of AstraZeneca vaccine. 
and there have now been two deaths linked to the outbreak at Nepean. A previously reported COVID death, a man in his 70s from Western Sydney who had died on August 17th at Nepean Hospital is now linked to this outbreak. There was also a, a gentleman in his 70s from South Eastern Sydney died at St George Hospital where he acquired his infection and he had received one dose of vaccine. Can I just extend my sincere condolences um, and sympathies to the loved ones? And this brings the COVID-related deaths to 65 since, the, since June 16. And the number of lives lost to the pandemic to, to 121. I wanted to indicate um, that I strongly support this comprehensive bundle of new measures which complement other actions. We need these measures to slow the growth of this escalating outbreak and give us time to vaccinate our population to save lives and prevent hospitalisations. We've currently got 470 cases in hospital and 80 people in ICU. The vast majority of those are not vaccinated and the others have only received one dose of vaccine. All of us have a responsibility to do our part to protect each other and our loved ones. Our vaccines are effective, even one dose, but two is much better. So I'm urging everyone, um, particularly those who've had the AZ vaccine, to, if you've had it within four weeks, ring your doctor and get an appointment. We have suggested reducing the schedule so that you can have it at any time after four weeks in the current context, noting that um, pending advice, there will be other vaccines and booster doses available in next year. So in terms of longevity of protection, be assured that booster doses will be available. Can I indicate that I understand that this is going to be so hard for everyone across New South Wales for the next four to six weeks. But I do not want to be standing here every day announcing these high rates of hospitalisation and these deaths. Every one of these deaths is someone's mother, father, grand grandmother, grandfather. And I want to see those deaths as low as possible. So I call on the people of New South Wales to work together. We can get on top of this. We can reduce the rate of increase and we can reduce the number of people that are seriously ill and who will die. But it's going to be hard and it requires us to redouble our efforts and work together. We have got two very effective vaccines but we also need these additional measures given the rate of increase. Now, particularly, I want to call out to the resilient, vibrant communities of southwestern Sydney and western Sydney who have borne so much of the brunt of this recent outbreak. My heart and my thoughts are with you, but it is critically important that we put these enhanced measures in place to protect you and your loved ones. But we have got, as the Premier indicated, around 500 booking, thousand bookings available for the targeted at the residents 16 to 39 years in all of those local government areas of concern. Those bookings are available this week and next week. So I can't urge you enough to go online and book and get a dose of vaccine. That vaccine will protect you, but also your loved, your loved ones. So please register for that. In terms of my update, <laughs> um, the Deputy um, Premier will give the regional update, but we have had um, 27 new cases in Western New South Wales, bringing the total to 194. We've had additional cases in Far West there was a gathering in Maroubra and 11 people attending that gathering have tested positive. And again, um, 
I understand why people are tired and fatigued, but we just can't have that occurring where we end up with a, a further escalation of cases associated with events that are not permitted at this time. I would also just like to highlight the sewage detections. We've had sewage detections in Cobar, Port Macquarie, Parks, Canambal and Balambi sewage treatment plants in recent days. Thank you. Well, good morning and can I start by, of course, passing on my condolences to those families that lost loved ones overnight. Uh, you remain in our thoughts and prayers. As uh, the Premier and, uh, and Dr Kerry Chan have touched on, the continued focus is in uh, Western New South Wales. In the Western New South Wales local health district, there were 27 cases, 21 in Dubbo, two in Gadooga, two in Burke and two in Gilgandra. In the far west local health district, uh, there were three in Wilk Canyon. They're the, they're the three that we mentioned yesterday, but as Dr Chan touched on, overnight already, uh, we are aware of three new cases in Wilcania and two more in Broken Hill. So anyone that visited Wilcania over the last few days in that region, we're asking you to get tested, regardless if you've got symptoms or not. And it's continued to be a real issue for the far west communities and we need to get in front of them. The Central Coast LHD had three cases. The Hunter New England Local Health District, three cases. There were two in the Newcastle LGA and one in the Maitland LGA. The Mid-North Coast, we had an additional case overnight uh, for in South, South Kempsey, it was a close contact of a previous case that we had previously reported. And the two cases uh, that we have in southern New South Wales uh, that were reported yesterday in Queanbeyan. And again overnight, uh, we've been over, uh, already advised since the 8 o'clock cut off for reporting two new cases in Goulburn. We've touched on sewage detections and they're happening right across regional and rural New South Wales, but our concerns are in areas of Cobar, Port Macquarie, Parks and Canamble and Balambi down in the Illawarra. Clearly it's a tool that we use, clearly it has shown us uh, an advance notice in uh, areas of concern. Our focus and our message to the people of Central West, especially in Dubbo, is to get tested. Uh, if you've got symptoms, to stay home, await your results. We need to get on top of this. We saw how this escalated here in Sydney. We're seeing how it escalates in places like Victoria and the ACT. And for the message for regional rural New South Wales is to continue to get tested, more importantly, get vaccinated. We don't want to fall behind on the vaccination rates, as the state and the Premier touched on, that we've had record days in vaccinations here in Sydney and across the state, but we don't want to fall behind in regional rural New South Wales. So get on and book, go to your GP, your pharmacist, or of course at the New South Wales Health Clinics where vaccination is available for everyone. Thank you. Premier, you said, you said last month that measures like curfews have Well, clearly two fundamental things shifted this week in New South Wales, and the first was the sudden escalation of cases, and secondly, the feedback from police about uh, a handful of people flagrantly disregarding the rules. And for that reason, I tasked uh, Health and Police to work together to give me a final list of what we can throw at this, to leave no shadow of doubt as to how serious we are about getting the rate of growth down, the case numbers down. I don't want to leave a shadow of a doubt. And I do want to extend my heartfelt empathy and gratitude to those uh, populations living in the 12 local government areas of concern in Western and South Western Sydney. I know, we all know, most of you are doing the right thing and suffering the most, but it's to protect you and your loved ones that we're doing this, to make sure we don't leave any stone unturned whilst we vaccinate the population. Because once you're vaccinated, we know it slows the spread and it protects you against getting into hospital and it protects your loved ones. So we're racing to get those vaccination rates up. But whilst they, they are where they are, we don't want to see families go through the grief unnecessarily. So we're asking everybody to go through a bit of pain in order to protect lives until we get those vaccination rates up. And as we've seen, there is no simple answer to the Delta. Short, sharp lockdowns don't always work. Uh, as we've seen, this Delta variant is very different to anything Australia has experienced. But we also have wonderful opportunities here. Unlike the rest of the world, we've not been through uh, the very difficult circumstances others have faced. We have an opportunity through higher vaccination uh, to show how it can be done moving forward, to protect lives, to protect against uh, hospitalisation. We have the opportunity here in New South Wales and Australia and in other states 
to show how it can be done as safely as possible. Well, it's a combination of things. This is an opportunity uh, for all of us to know that we have thrown everything at this. Now, whilst the, 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 whilst the evidence, whilst, whilst the evidence of curfews uh, is mixed, uh, the evidence to a lot of this thing is mixed. But I don't want us to ever look back and say we didn't try, we didn't put everything into this. And uh, put it this way, other states and jurisdictions who've had curfews, who've had uh, lockdown measures, have still seen cases grow. We have to be real about this. Uh, we have to be very real about this. Delta is like nothing we've seen and we're asking everybody to do the right thing because even a handful of people not doing the right thing is having tragic Premier, consequences. Why has it taken eight weeks of lockdown for you to throw everything at this? Mm -hmm. Premier, why, Premier, has, it why has it taken eight weeks? I'll come back in a second, yeah, Clinton. Yeah. In, in the, in the of... Excuse me, I'll get back to you in a second. Yeah, Look, in the interest of simplicity, because we know people find this pretty complex, yeah. was there thought given to extending all these rules just across the whole of Greater Sydney, whether it's the curfew or any of these other rules? It's really, really important for us to balance a number of things moving forward. And we're in constant contact with the chief psychiatrist. We're in constant contact with the balance that we need to achieve. And uh, I asked our health and police to put together, uh, and, and cross-government agencies to put together a list of final measures where we all bunker down and, but I want to make this point very clear. If health says to us there's another local government area of concern we need to include in that, we will. But conversely, on a positive side, if we see numbers in a particular local government area go down, we can take that area out. So we know from the experience overseas and other places there is not a simple solution. There isn't one thing that works. But I don't want it to ever be said that we didn't throw everything at this. And we also have to appreciate this is an evolving situation, just as other states have evolved. What, has, what was you know, a short lockdown has become a lockdown, a longer lockdown for many others. And we need to be real about this. And the people of New South Wales should know that at every turn, uh, we've made every decision we have in the best interest of our citizens and we'll continue to do that. But we also have to be real about Delta and what it means and positively our rates of vaccination are going through the roof in New South Wales and the quicker we get to 70% or 80%, the quicker we'll be able to live life more freely. Why yeah. well, has it taken eight weeks for you to throw everything at this? Uh, obviously we take decisions based on the circumstances and the people of New South Wales get that. This week, uh, when we saw a sudden surge in numbers, in addition to feedback from police about compliance. I mean, it was heartbreaking to hear uh, on consecutive days that a couple of hundred people did not have a reasonable reason for being out of the house and roaming around the community. Now, that is a concern. A couple of hundred people a day were picked up by police. And as fantastic as police are, we shudder to think how many people weren't picked up uh, at that time. And that's why uh, those compliance issues coupled with uh, the cases as to where they are, but also coupled with our real fight. We have the time now, uh, whilst we're in this lockdown, to get our vaccination rates up as high as possible and to look forward to things we can do when we have those high vaccination rates. Sorry, the gentleman behind you. Expect, but do you expect people to buy that? Because you've been dragged kicking and screaming every step of the way here. You know, lockdown light with retail, non-essential retail allowed to open, and then it was the, the ring fence around Sydney, and now it's a curfew on the LGA's of concern. So how can you say that, I, you know, you've been doing everything you can when you clearly haven't, and now you're in this situation where you seem to be one step behind the virus at every step? Can I say that the New South Wales government always follows the advice that we're given? But Premier, and it has yeah, to... Sorry, Premier, can you just let me finish? Doctor, hang on, sorry, Premier. Sorry. But my doctor will say, like, will give me advice, like, stop smoking and don't get cancer, keep smoking, get cancer. I stop smoking... Uh, oh, sorry, I keep smoking, get cancer, but I say I've acted on the health advice. So aren't you being a bit slick when you say you've always acted on the health advice? Because Dr Chan could tell you one thing, and then you as a policy maker, you can take a different decision. So what, why haven't you? Why, why didn't you act more closely with the health advice you probably received? weeks ago. Well, I don't think you can use the comparisons you've given that don't make sense, but what does make sense is that Delta is uncharted territory for Australia. Uh, Delta is uncharted territory for Australia. And I reckon if you speak to a few other state leaders and first ministers today, 
they will tell you how difficult it is to keep a lid on it, even though you've thrown everything at it from day one, you've done everything you can, Delta is very different. And please know at every stage, the New South Wales government has responded quickly to the advice we have. But we've also learned a lot, and I think the learnings from New South Wales uh, can be applied to other states when they go through uh, what all states will have to go through is come to terms with the fact that eventually you need to provide freedoms to your citizens. Eventually, we need to open up to the rest of the world because the rest of the world is starting to open up. Now, we're not in the space of doing that yet, but we will be at some point. And it just goes to show that even a handful of cases without any restrictions can become hundreds and hundreds very quickly. And that is why it's important for us to take on the learnings to know what we need to do in order to get the case numbers and the growth of cases down, but more importantly, to get those vaccination rates up as high as possible. And that is key. And at every turn, I can assure you, the New South Wales Government has followed the advice we've had. We've made decisions based in the best interests of our citizens. But I wish there was a perfect pathway. I wish there was a list of things that said, do this and you'll be OK. But I don't know a single leader in the world that has that perfect list, and I don't know a single leader in the world that has said this is the perfect way through this. And, and we're being very honest about that. But you did have a list of things that you could have done earlier that you didn't do. No, so what? The, not at all. Not yes, at all. Yes, you just. This is the list of things that we. This is the list of things we could have done earlier. I'm, I'm sorry. That we didn't can I, do. So why is the question? Why will, didn't we do it This is a very. This is a, a very important point, and I will ask the police commissioner and Dr. Chant to verify that this is the list we received last night. And I want to verify that uh, with both, if they don't mind, for, to, to have that just to demonstrate how closely aligned Team New South Wales is. We work together hours and hours every single day to do the right thing by our citizens. I, want, I will not have anybody say otherwise. I'll ask the Commissioner and also Dr Chant to verify exactly when we received this advice and exactly how long it took for us to accept it. Thanks, Barry. And it's important to note that I've been back every other week on the back of asking the police minister for additional powers that have been delivered. Operation Stay at Home started Monday. We were really positive in terms of we thought that stronger enforcement would have a positive impact on people's compliance. But 3,500 tickets this week and the examples that Deputy Commissioner Warboys and I have given for us just meant the police minister and I have ramped down because of the bad behaviour. Now, why the curfew now? Because from the health advice and police on the ground, that younger men in, the, in those areas of concern are being very difficult to manage. They're not complying. Now, that's not every person, obviously, but this is feedback as it comes in. Now, why didn't we ask for two or three weeks ago is because what we had asked for was additional mask wearing, permit systems and a whole range of other health orders. So, from a police perspective, yes, it has been a progressive lockdown based on the numbers, based on whether we're seeing compliance in areas and the spread of the virus. Now, in hindsight, do I wish that I raised curfews day one? Yeah, probably, but I, you probably would have laughed me out. If day one of the Delta variants, I stood here and said we're going to put curfews in anywhere in New South Wales, support the document, I support the continued police enforcement. I thank the police for the work they do. We will enforce a curfew. Again, I've been out warning people that the day of the caution is over. Thank you. Commissioner, if I could just ask you one more question about yeah, the extra police powers. Yeah. Uh, the new police powers to lock down apartment blocks to make health assessments. Police have been locking down apartment blocks for a number of weeks now through this outbreak. So, for the public, exactly what has changed here? So, so at the moment, uh, Section 62 order takes time. They have to wait for positive tests, which means whilst that's happening, people are still mob mobile, right? So it's about looking at are there any gaps that we can close, particularly with those potential positives. So what it means is from an intelligence perspective now, we don't have to wait for the Section 62 order. I can make an order, we can lock that down, allow ourselves to come in, make a proper assessment before some people, unfortunately, they, they escape. They want to get out before health come in. So, and with the residents, it's the same situation, is that we know that once there's a positive covert now, the close contacts will essentially escape from the house, which means we're never sort of capturing that spread of the virus. And, and, and with the, uh, the making people that have been outside their LGA return, they get a fine and then they have to isolate for 14 days, that's regardless of whether they're positive or not, is it? Uh, look, there's, there's there are two different things in that, right? So you unpack that, 
When we find someone who lives in the LGAs of concern and they're at Bondi Beach, they get a ticket, say the ticket's for $1,000, they take the ticket, then they go off and have a, have a cup of tea, right? Where now we've got the power to direct them home, we will check them whether they go home or not, obviously that's key. The second part is obviously there are people from those non-affected LGAs going in and again, running the risk of spreading the virus back into other LGAs. We don't want the LGAs to go from 12 to 13. That's about saying that if you have to go into the LGAs of concern, you, you'll, you'll obviously, one, you'll need a permit from next week. But if you don't have a reasonable excuse, well, you can go back home and isolate for 14 days. What's it about? Stopping the spread from the 12 LGAs so we don't have to expand powers like the curfew. Please, John, I'm not that they can wrongly find people and face no consequences for that. Is that really fair on the people of New South Wales who might be obeying the rules? Yeah, well, I obviously didn't watch the video. What I said to the officers is the day of giving cautions is over. Now we're still giving cautions. So let's run through A police officer makes a decision to take action or not. They can seek legal advice from the Police Operations Centre. If they make a decision to write the ticket, that ticket's reviewed by a sergeant in terms of whether that was correct or not. That ticket then again is reviewed by the Police Operations Centre before it's issued. There's lots of checks and balances in place. What we saw last night was still 300 cautions for, for incidents where police felt that it was a lion ball call, which is great. But what I'm sick of seeing is more cautions and action taken when we're not getting compliance across the state. Commissioner, Commissioner Fuller, so you've asked for these tougher restrictions, especially over the next month. Um, are you comfortable with the talk of freedoms being extended to fully vaccinated people in the coming weeks? In certain, look, the Doherty report, I've read it as well. The Premier's spoken but about the six million jabs, Mark, that we've been hearing about. Look, absolutely. I mean, I want us out of lockdown. This is all about getting out of lockdown. It's not about staying in lockdown. These, if you think about what I put forward, it's about restricting the movement of people to try and restrict the movement of the virus. So I want us out of lockdown. So absolutely. Service New South Wales website still doesn't have the application process up there. It comes into force tomorrow. Yep. What's going to happen to people who can't apply today because it's not so there? So the permit system will come up by at least midnight tonight. And as I said earlier, with any of the permits, if they're not available, you, and if you have a lawful purpose, you can still travel. We won't take action against you for the permits. But people need to remember, it's an offence today to leave Greater Sydney to go to regional New South Wales unless you have a reasonable excuse. The permit system just gives people, people greater certainty while they're leaving and it really helps police. Because you imagine we're trying to enforce something with 8 million people. It just helps us put our resources in the right place. A bit of a contentious one in the region. Some service stations and roadhouses are being threatened with $5,000 fines for having truckies sit and eat a meal. They say it's essential for fatigue management. Are they exempt? Well, we did exempt? face the same thing last year when the first round of COVID hit. We'll work with regional New South Wales, the Deputy Premier, to come up with a solution to allow takeaway to happen and, and people not congregate. The great problem has been with this takeaway issue in the city has been that people get takeaway, there's 20, 30 people sitting around the shop, which defeats the purpose. So we are working on that issue. We acknowledge that it's a problem. We are working with regional New South Wales to find a fix. Dr Chan. Oh, Thanks very much. And, be, and before I um, answer your question, could I just also um, indicate one other change that we're making? So clearly our lab laboratory testing turnaround times have really been impacted by the high numbers of tests that we've been undertaking and we've had to make really difficult choices. So what I'm announcing today is that the authorised workers who work outside those local government areas of concern are, are only permitted to work if rapid antigen testing is implemented at their work site or the worker has had their first vaccination dose by the 30th of August. Now there is bookings, there are bookings at the um, at the Kudos Bank Arena for vaccination. So there is no issue with access to vaccines um, and that is a requirement. And also we're going to cease the surveillance testing. Um, I just want to acknowledge people's cooperation with that surveillance testing, but at the moment we're going to have to trade off those difficult um, priorities and prioritise symptomatic testing so that we can get that turnaround time and those results um, improved because of the slippage. In terms of the question before, um, a working party set up across government was um, requested by the Premier to look at what additional things we could put in. And, that, and I wholeheartedly back additional measures. 
I don't think um, I've at all underestimated the challenge we're facing. But on the positive side, we do have increasing access to vaccines. We have increasing access to vaccines through pharmacies, our GP and our state-run clinic services. And I'd just like to acknowledge the fact that those have scaled and the hard work that GPs, pharmacists and our own state clinics are, are undertaking. We have the ability to rapidly increase our vaccination coverage. And what this is about is buying us time. This is buying us time because the effect of those vaccines on those 530,000 workers, maybe even you know, 600,000 workers with all the vaccine that we're pouring into those areas of southwestern Sydney and Western Sydney, that will mean those workers are protected in two weeks' time a bit, given they've had their first dose, but it will also mean that they're like, less likely to pass on the infection. So, th so that massive hit of vaccine into those workers will actually have an effect on the transmission as well as protecting those workers. We hope to see that effect kick in, but it takes time. And so this enhanced set of measures is really aiming to bias that time. And in the meantime, everyone else has got access to various forms of vaccination. I also want to remind everyone, although we are seeing the cases predominantly in these areas. With case numbers rising, there is also rising cases outside those LGAs of concern. And so it is important that there is no complacency anywhere. I'm really asking everyone to just hang with us for the next four to six weeks. Buckle down, do the right thing. As I said, I do not want to be standing up here every day announcing deaths. Dr. Chan, the, 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 the curfew, um, was, that, uh, was that health advice or was that police advice? Health also... Any, uh, any health. advice, that, any actual evidence that it will curb transmission? Health supported the curfew and that's because we want to do everything we can. The evidence is mixed, as the Premier said, um, but we also on the grounds, we are knowing that we're getting feedback through our um, public health units that a small number of people are also still mixing across households. And so we suspect that the curfew could assist in that. And as the Premier has said, no one wants to leave any stone unturned or any doubt. But I've just got to say the evidence about curfews is mixed, but I also think it sends a significant signal about the the crisis we're, we're facing. Dr. Um, Sorry, Dr. Chan, um, you spoke before about how the majority of the spread is happening in workplaces and in people's households. Is there any health evidence to suggest that any of these measures are going to reduce that spread? Yes, because the um, permit system will put controls on people um, because people will have to say that they have to go to that workplace or that they are an authorised worker. And we will, are also looking at requiring them to be checked by their employers. So we're, and making a false declaration on those forms will be subject to fines. Um, so it's a very similar system to the, um, with, with minor modifications from the Victorian system. This is about using um, all the levers we have to make sure that people um, do the right thing. And as I said, the vast majority of people do. This is about doing everything we can for those people that may be just deciding to go into work because it's easier rather than them actually having to be there. So, 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 with the message you're trying to send about the crisis we're currently in? I don't think anything about the Premier's comments is other than um, recognising the escalating case numbers and the situation we are in. I think that, that it is important that we do show the community that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. I am very um, happy that we have access to vaccines and access to vaccines in growing quantities 
and access to vaccines through multiple points of access. Because one of the other points I'd like to make, and this is so critical, we are not going to be, going to be protected in New South Wales or Australia unless we protect the most vulnerable and make sure that our immunisation coverage in our most vulnerable, uh, people without a home, people that are encountering um, challenges with their mental health, people that are um, experiencing drug and alcohol issues, people that have very complex family situations. We, are, we have to prioritise vaccine to reach our most vulnerables because living with COVID requires that high level of vaccination coverage, but it requires it everywhere. And I think what we've seen is that the level going into this, the levels of vaccine coverage in parts of southwestern Sydney and western Sydney have been amongst some of the lowest. And I just want to applaud the people of southwestern Sydney and western Sydney who have come out and embraced vaccination. And we have seen, um, I think, one of the fastest trajectories in vaccination uptake that we've ever seen. And for me, that is the light at the end of the tunnel. So anything the Premier is saying about easing restrictions it is about the light at the end of the tunnel and at some point we will need to live with COVID but that we need to have equitable high rates of vaccination across the population, making sure that we have those high rates particularly amongst our vulnerable members of our community. Because showing people the light at the end of the tunnel is not quite the same as letting them out of the tunnel. So uh, showing people that we will get better restrict, we will get freedoms when we get vaccinated is not the same as giving people freedoms when we get vaccinated. So, so do you support giving people freedoms on August 28th? We know that um, individuals that are vaccinated and when you've got two individuals are vaccinated, um, that's the chances of infection occurring in that setting is very low. I, look, the Premier has asked that we consider um, what, uh, you know, provide public health advice on the most um, very basic and minimal changes um, to the levels of restrictions. Um, we will provide advice on that. But I do not think there's a disconnect. I think this is about saying that we have to get vaccinated. Um, we are as a society, living to, with Delta is going to require us to have very high rates of vaccination and, as I said, equitable rates of vaccination across the population. Over the course of this past Delta outbreak, have you at any point offered vaccines to people who are in less and more restrictions have brought in? I could confirm that I have not threatened to resign at any point. I am so committed to seeing this outbreak behind us. I am so committed to doing all I can as part of a broader team, a broader team across health and across government. And can I just acknowledge the health workers and our districts who are working day and night to put in place vaccination clinics, testing clinics, providing clinical care to um, people with COVID and, uh, and whilst maintaining other aspects of the essential health business. We are in no way um, other than committed to do all we can to reduce the case numbers, reduce the burden of disease and get those vaccine coverage levels as high as we can. Just on Shell Harbour, um, you and the Premier have been quite strict in previous weeks in keeping Shell Harbour within the Greater Sydney region in terms of lockdown restrictions. Um, over the past couple of days, we've seen a bit of an increase in cases in that area. I think we're up to eight active cases. Wollongong has 12. Why now has the decision been made to remove Shell Harbour from Greater Sydney? Can you explain um, that to us? Look, that's an administrative issue because ultimately we may still decide that the risk in Shell Harbour and provide advice that they remain in lockdown. So the reality is the whole state is in lockdown and we will provide our advice separately about the risk for all of the um, areas outside Greater Metropolitan Sydney in terms of what we buy advice to government for. Dr. Chan, I'd like to ask you about healthcare workers and mandatory vaccinations. Uh, there's a plan uh, that's, that that's correct. is going to be 
uh, implementing a public health order to make it mandatory for all healthcare workers? Well, the Prime Minister has uh, just started speaking in uh, Canberra. We are going to monitor his comments there and we'll bring you what he has to say shortly. And just while we have your news from the ACT, 12 new cases reported overnight in Canberra. Let's return to the media conference in Sydney. So I support the actions of the, of the Health Minister and um, the proposed dates of the first dose is around the 30th of September and the second dose is the 30th of November. There has been a prioritisation of health work care workers for vaccination. Um, for a long period of time and I think it is now time for everyone to embrace the opportunities afforded to them. You have a responsibility as a healthcare worker to protect your patients and vaccination and wearing appropriate PPE and getting tested if you have symptoms are all part of your inherent responsibilities. instead of rise. I, unfortunately, I would anticipate that case numbers may still continue to increase and then to some extent the next, the answer to your question is in the hands of all of us. Um, what we need to do is break the cycle of transmission um, and that is complex because of the large family sizes and the seeding into workplaces. Dr Chan, can I just ask, on these new measures, the Premier said that she was handed this advice last night. Are there any measures in this at all that you've recommended before last night? Look, I think what's important to focus on is the fact that the Premier at all points has um, <laughs> followed, um, asked us to provide the best advice and I am totally committed to these additional measures. I think it is so important that we focus together on the mammoth task ahead of us to drive these um, numbers down. And I totally am behind this set So you recommended measures. some of it before last night, is that right? Um, the, the task that we had was to come up looking at all of the existing measures, what additional measures would occur. And I, as I said to you, I'm, I've, um, you know, clearly a lot of ideas are floated, but the evidence for curfews is not strong. But as I said, because of intelligence, the, pre the, the um, police commissioner and I considered that um, the I intelligence we were getting, that it may be effective and may assist. And as I said, I personally don't want to leave any, th any stone unturned in, or any regret in terms of the, the things that we are doing to bring this well, under control. What are the next LGAs now for the right notice? And is Ram one of them given that party in Maroubra? To some extent, it depends on how um, effectively we can identify all the people at the party and get that locked down and what occurs after that. So I would just ask everyone to cooperate fully with public health. It is in no one's interest not to cooperate um, wholeheartedly in relation Are to public LGAs health. Are the LGAs that you're concerned about right now? I'm concerned about the whole of New South Wales and I think that rather than, yes, there's a focus on the LGAs of concern and we're lifting vaccination coverage in those local government areas of concern, but I think everyone needs to be on watch. Every day I read out sewage detections in, in rural regional. Um, we're obviously dealing with a complex situation in far west and western New South Wales. Um, and again, my thoughts are with the Aboriginal communities and the community, rural communities. Um, but so I think that it, it's really important that everyone sees themselves as under threat from COVID. Doesn't it make sense to have the rules apply to the whole of Sydney? So can I just say the stringent rules do apply for the whole of Sydney? But the, so, cur the curfew. <laughs> sorry. The curfew. I think. I, I think it becomes an issue of where you are likely to get the greatest yield, and we always have to make operational decisions about how to prioritise. So if I want to prioritise my rapid testing clinics and my you know, infrastructure on the ground, it will be prioritised in the areas that I know most of the cases are. And I'm relying on the rest of Sydney to um, be vigilant. And I just don't want that complacency to set in in the rest of Sydney and the great, and greater New South Wales. So from Monday, workers from the Canterbury Banks town, Cumberland and Fairfield LGAs won't have to do the surveillance testing according to this press release. Is that trying to get 
the wait times down for the test results? That's exactly right. So at the moment, um, positive tests are taking too long to get processed and that adds delay. And we know identifying cases early and their contacts early. So we've had to make that hard decision. I've got to say the surveillance testing lifted the testing numbers and identified a number of cases. So my call out to the community is, if you have any symptoms, please go and get tested. Um, but this is unfortunately a prioritisation we have to make, um, uh, to a prioritisation of resources that we have to make at this time. Premier, Premier, just on vaccines. Premier, just on vaccines. Um, in the coming months, if restrictions do ease for fully vaccinated people, how will they prove to, say, police that they are fully vaccinated? Will it be part of the Service New South Wales Act, for example? Oh, good question. Well, at the moment, you can go through Medicare and verify that you've been vaccinated and it's got real-time information. But New South Wales is also working on an on a easy-to-use feature which will be linked into QR codes. So we're also working on our own system. But in the interim, I do recommend if people want to have proof of their vaccination, you just go through the Medicare app and there's real-time information on how many doses you've had and when you've been vaccinated. So in the interim, people can use that. But I will also say that Service New South Wales through Minister Dominello is working on uh, good technology where people will be able to do everything at the one this go. This is where we'll we farewell well viewers on ABC yeah, TV in WA. You can continue watching this news conference efficient. on the uh, ABC news channel. We can make life easier for our citizens. Premier, Premier, there is a major... For the, for the ADF to operate vaccine hubs in I'm Western sorry, I didn't get the first bit sorry. of the question. Yeah. There's been calls for the ADF to operate vaccine hubs in Western Sydney like St Mary's and Auburn. Why hasn't the New South Wales government requested this happen? Oh, we have. Uh, Minister Hazard uh, wrote to his counterpart a couple of weeks ago. So uh, we, are, we are now racing to get the vaccine out to as many people as possible. Uh, and we're doing really well. I mean, the fact that um, so many people got vaccinated yesterday, it was a bumper day, 126,000, I think, from memory, is an incredible day. Uh, and any extra support we can get is, will be welcome. And we have made those requests. But I'll also say New South Wales Health has stepped up enormously. And can I thank all the workers who've been involved in that process? But can I also please thank the GP network? Ordinarily, uh, in non-COVID circumstances, we'd all normally go to our GP or our workplace to get vaccinated. And the GPs have done an amazing job. And we've been encouraging uh, the GPs um, and supporting them uh, when they've gone through frustration. So thank you to all the GPs, but thank you also to our pharmacists. The way they've stepped up has been amazing. In a very short amount of time, they've stepped up, especially in providing advice on AstraZeneca and getting that vaccine out. It's been incredible. And as well, New South Wales, and just to make things clear, we have a combination of, of places you can get vaccinated. The mass vaccination hubs we have are outstanding because they get through thousands and thousands of people in a very short amount of time. But we also have very targeted pop-up clinics where we go out to a particular community over the course of a few days and encourage a particular community with particular connections to a venue to get vaccinated. So it's all hands on deck. And as you heard from Susan Pearce uh, from New South Wales Health, who's responsible for the rollout, uh, we are making it literally an operation like nothing before seen in New South Wales. And what we need now is for people to come forward, especially can I again call out, as Dr Chant has, it's part of our, it's a critical part of our strategy to have everybody between the ages of 69 and 39 vaccinated. Uh, we're very pleased the federal government gave us those extra half a million doses of Pfizer. Uh, uh, we were pleading for more vaccines, we got them, and now we're pleading for people to come forward, get bookings and get that jab in their arm because in three or four weeks' time, they'll be fully vaccinated, they'll be protected, their loved ones will be protected, but it will also do a great community service because it means the spread will be reduced and it will help all of us get out of lockdown uh, in a more timely way. Um, you've been involved in this process for quite a while. Um, what are you seeing in your community and 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 what is there a way for the government to be more transparent about what's going on? Yeah, in the advice um, Dr Chant provided, and I think she's been talking about childcare centres continuously for a few days, I think the number she gave me this morning was around 29 childcare centres have been impacted, especially in Western and South Western Sydney. So that is the reason why, uh, and that is why we're asking all childcare workers, all disability workers to come forward and get vaccinated, because we want to see a stress taken off parents, we want young people to be able to have those opportunities, uh, and, it's, and that's based on information we would receive from um, the health team. In regard to the plant protest tomorrow, what sort of disruption can people who still need to move around Sydney 
What sort of disruption can they expect with the police operation that's going to take uh, place? Look, uh, I don't think Doctor, uh, I don't think Commissioner Fuller, I should say, or Minister Elliott or anybody has been uh, more stronger than ever to say, please don't engage in any illegal activity. And uh, we still don't know the impact of that initial protest. Because when people are diagnosed and you ask them what they've done, I doubt they're going to tell us they were at an illegal protest. So let's not underestimate the impact of those mass events have on super spreading events. We know from the updates Dr Chant gives us that even when there's a small gathering, when there's a small gathering, infection rates are horrific. So imagine when there's thousands of thousands of people coming together illegally, without proper protection, without social distancing, without any of those things. It is, it is scary to think how many cases can arise from that, and I can't stress that enough. I think that was one of the worst days to feel so heartbroken when people knowingly did the wrong thing. And I would hate to think that any of those people then went home and gave the virus to their loved ones. I wouldn't be able to live with that guilt. And I just want people to appreciate that, yes, if anybody has a protest, take it out on social media, uh, take it out when we're out of lockdown, tell us all what you think of the world. We don't mind that. There are multiple ways of demonstrating your uh, dislike of something or your protest. But do it. Don't do it by illegal activity. It is just hurting everybody, including your loved ones, and that is the strongest message. So for the general public. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, sure. Just on that protest question, can you give us an update on what you're going to be doing? Yeah, thanks. Can I just say that the, the police. Oh, sorry, mate. The um, New South Wales uh, Police Minister David Elliott and the Police Commander, uh, Deputy Commissioner Mao Landing, will give an update this afternoon in relation to the operation, but I can say there will be a strong police presence, much bigger than last time. And my messaging has been clear as the ministers. There's, there's no time to protest. There are many other ways for you to voice your concerns. If you come into the city, you, you will be disappointed. Obviously, a big part of the police activity will be assuring that things like vaccination and essential workers can continue. So big police presence don't come into the city. From what we understand, unless you're in the 12 LGAs in which you have to be an authorised worker, in Greater Sydney there's no list of occupations or industries where you're permitted to travel? No, no. The permit system is for all of Greater Sydney and it is for all workers leaving Sydney going to regional and rural New South Wales. And then you just that have to tick a box to say you're a worker and you get the green well, light. What safety measure is that? Well, firstly, uh, you know, you have got the ability to go into regional rural New South Wales because regional rural New South Wales is still functioning to a degree and pre the lockdown uh, quite, quite largely. And in a lot of goods and services, uh, labour workforce comes from Sydney into the regions. So you've got to allow that sort of flow to happen. But if you lie on your permit system, and we will, we will, you know, you, you will get significant fines. This gives us an ability to follow through on what we said, and that is to protect the regions by understanding the level of movement. We've changed the rules around people going to their second residence. We've changed the rules about people going to another residence for work or, or for maintenance and care. So I'm very confident that the permit system that we've got in place at the moment is one that will protect the regions. But I can also assure you that discussions already have commenced with the support of the Premier and the Commissioner and uh, Service New South Wales in expanding the permit system to all citizens leaving uh, Sydney. But we'll see how we go in the first tranche of this to see what, what sort of take up we have and how many people actually are obliged by it. Is that permit system up and running now? The permit system will be up and running uh, this evening. Uh, midnight tonight will go online. And as the Commissioner touched on, it's a way for police uh, to, to be able to do their job to make sure they can, in a, in, for a level of governance and surveillance. Um, and if you can't get on tomorrow, and, and we have any issues, you still have the right to travel, uh, but what we are asking people is to start getting the permits. Are there any delays to it? You... No, I, I'm, I'm not expecting any delays. Yeah, um, just, yeah. on, just on Wilcannia, the new cases there, there's obviously been the effort to focus vaccines and testing there. On Indigenous communities around the state more broadly, are you confident there's sufficient supply of vaccines like Pfizer? Because we've heard from the Maury Aboriginal Medical Service they've had to start cancelling Pfizer appointments this week. Well, not, not, not what I've understood. But clearly, when we had the issue with Wilcannia, and, and I've touched on it before, the Royal Flying Doctors were in there on Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, hundreds of uh, vaccinations were offered. Pfizer was uh, the choice of vaccination. Uh, in Walgett, where we redirected our resources. There were more doses uh, from both the state and the federal government. Uh, we're focused on our Indigenous communities. They are a vulnerable community and they have, under the national plan for vaccination rollout, which the federal government had a responsibility earlier this year 
was to look after those vulnerable communities uh, and uh, happen. And now we're picking up the pieces, but no, I'm confident uh, that we have all the supplies and all the resources required, including the support of ADF and the whole of government in dealing with those communities. Deputy, 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 Deputy. Deputy. There's been you know, backflips on different restrictions. The advice seems to change weekly. Confusing messages put out, but case numbers continue to go up. How concerned are you that the public is starting to stop listening and is losing confidence in the government's handling of this crisis? Well, firstly, I, I'm not confused, and as a member of the crisis committee, and I've been a member of the crisis committee from day one, along with the Premier and other senior ministers, and uh, we get given this advice. We, 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 we match that advice against the conditions of the day, the, the issues of the day, and you always leave tools in the toolbox that you can apply if things get worse, and we've seen the escalation, but I would argue the same reason in the same argument that I have for regional rural New South Wales, where big tranches of the regions don't have a COVID case, have never had a COVID case, yet we've got them in lockdown and we've got a number of restrictions on their movement. But that's probably why there are no cases. And in this scenario, the restrictions that we've put in place, even in a staged approach, I believe is the reason that we're only talking numbers in the 600s rather than in the thousands. So the reality is that the restrictions have worked and we make those decisions. And as a member of uh, the crisis cabinet, and, and everyone points to the Premier, but she has a team around her is, who support her and support the decisions of the government to deal with this pandemic. And I'm, I'm, I'm as responsible as the Premier and as are my senior colleagues that are part of that crisis committee. You don't think people are confused? No, I don't think people are confused. The reality is, is that we've got to keep applying more restrictions to manage the events of the day. And we've, we've seen an escalation this week. So therefore, we've applied uh, what I would argue maybe the last uh, measures that we uh, uh, have up our sleeve, and we're confident that we'll see a peak, and we'll see with vaccination rates going up, that this will stabilise, and there is light at the end of the tunnel. Deputy Premier, just on Indigenous vaccination rates. Indigenous vaccination work when there's no definition of essential services or reasons to travel for work into the regions, and was a ring of steel one of the extra measures you put to government? So clearly, region. Regional, regional seeding is, is one of the things that we need to prevent and um, clearly the permit system is one way of engaging with that because we can then um, link it to testing. So at the moment people have to get tested when they go out of Greater Sydney and also we can, we're working with a lot of industries around rat testing. Um, I know there was a question here earlier. The rapid antigen testing has to be used daily because it's not as sensitive or reliable and we don't want it people that have got symptoms to use it, but it's almost a preventative. So there's a range of strategies that we need to put in place. At the moment we have a lockdown and to some extent that gives us breathing room to look at the measures of controlling that seeding into the into the regions. Last questions, yes. Is, is, is this is there anything else in reserve now? Or look there is can I make very clear this is where we bunker down. The only, uh, the only major change that I would anticipate in terms of restrictions is, is if the health experts say there's additional local government areas which need to go down uh, into that, those areas of concern. Or, on the flip side, if we see a particular local government area respond well in terms of the case numbers, uh, we can take those areas out. But please know we have nothing left on the field. And this has to be an approach which is balanced by all the uh, mental health concerns, all the other issues we need to balance as a government. Whether it's health and safety, of course that's our priority. Whether it's uh, compliance, making sure people are doing the right thing, whether it's mental health. Uh, and I just want to thank everybody in Team New South Wales. This has been a team effort. As far as the pandemic has been concerned, we've been at it like 20 months now. And can I just now publicly express my gratitude to everybody in the health team, everybody in the police team, everybody in Dr Chan and the public health team, all the thousands of frontline workers, uh, all of our colleagues, all of the community leaders. Yes, it's been frustrating and difficult, but it's during these difficult times that we all test our medal. And I don't think there's a single person in our state that's not affected in some way. All of us are. And this is a chance to bunker down and also provide leadership on how we can live with this into the future, because we have to come to terms with that. And I just encourage everybody to please keep doing the right thing. The small number of you that aren't, watch out because we'll find you. And for the rest of us, a huge, huge thank you, especially for getting vaccinated. I'm, I'm just blown away. And you know, previously somebody asked, is the community still with us? 
More than 120,000 people came out and got vaccinated yesterday. More than that number came out to get tested. We are so deeply grateful that Team New South Wales is responding in the best way we know how and will continue to do that. Yes, there'll be difficult days and I've lived through all of them, but there'll be better days and I see the better days coming. And for Dr Chan, Commissioner Fuller, the Deputy Premier, all of our colleagues, Minister Hazard, uh, all of our colleagues, it is a round the clock exercise, but we do it because we're dedicated to serving our community. We do it because we have important roles to play, but we also do it because we are inspired by community who are doing it tough, but are stepping up and showing us what resilience and strength looks like, and that's what New South Wales is made of. And I look forward uh, to updating the community regularly, but also working together on this, because that's how we'll get through it. And we'll show, uh, hopefully, the rest of Australia what opportunities lie ahead with those high vaccination rates. Thank you. Thank you.